Right. I decided to put the hoodie on um, for this video, unlike the two I recorded before this one, because um, I was getting a little cold. But um, in this video, I'm going to talk about something that I think I've only heard ev um, evangelicals, well, certainly evangelicals within my particular Christian denomination talk about, and that is America's obsession with death and violence. Now, some of you may automatically assume from having seen some of my previous videos that I'm just referring to the media. Um, that's both yes and no to that. Um, on the one hand, yeah, that seems to be the only thing that the media focus, um, seems to want to focus on in the world, that, they, that the media feels that, um, that people should see um, as much as possible. I mean, it goes without saying, and um, unlike my last, only the video I just recorded on on television, on TV, on how corrupt TV is in general. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do this video without being profane, and for those that um, and for those that are that I that, that want to enjoy this, so just mostly because I want this to be, uh, I, I just want to be intro introspective on this. Um, something that's worth remembering. Um, is when this country was first founded, a lot of blood was spilt. Um, I feel it's very important that that that, that particular precipice be um, set. Everything about this country, the United States of America, everything about this country in general has a violent o undertone or overtone to it. Take the... Um, the Star, St the national anthem, the Star Spangled Spangled Banner, the Star Spangled Banner, the Star Spangled Banner of the American anthem, was written by Francis Scott Key, who witnessed the battle um, and wrote the, the what's become the American anthem, based on what he had seen. Um, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people wonder why. America is involved in so many conflicts and has been involved in more com in so many conflicts since almost since its founding. It shouldn't become as a surprise when you think about just the Civil War. A lot of people have joke about this. I've been joking about this a bit, but more Americans have died in the Civil War than um, any other war America has been involved in because all of the combatants were Americans technically. Um, World War Two. Could the American forces have ended World War Two without using the the uh, without using an atomic bomb? Probably, but it would have taken a couple years longer to do. And there was a lot of political pressure to end the war. As soon, there was a lot of political pr at the, the decision that was made was to use the atomic bomb was made under the pretense that American lives held more value than Japanese lives. It's nothing anybody didn't already know, but that is the reason that the atomic bomb was used to end World War II with Japan. As everyone knows, almost 300,000 lives were extinguished, either instantly or over the course of the years that followed. I was just thinking while I was to why why what's going ahead a bit, the certain lines from the Star Spangled Banner. Bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Um, just the entire narrative of the Star Spangled Banner just speaks to a country that embraces its violent past and is, has no problem using violence to preserve itself. And it really is unfortunate that a lot of the extremists in this country have chosen to embrace that part to push their own agendas and agendas and viewpoints. I'm of course referring to the Second Amendment um, in that regard, but I'm going to talk about that a bit more later on in this video. Um, but um, getting back to the narrative of America's conflicts, the Korean War. A lot of people talk about Vietnam and now the war, the so-called war on terrorism, which I'm going to get to in a minute, being both being at the time the longest wars America was involved in. A lot of people don't even realize that the Korean War never officially ended. Combat has ended, but technically the Korean War is still going on. It is officially the longest war in, in human history right now. 
The only thing about it is they are South and North Korea are in, are in are have a ceasefire right now. Technically, the war hasn't ended. While it may be true that the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, as it once was, no longer exists, but as we already know, Vladimir Putin wants to bring that version of Russia back, and is well on, and is well on his way to doing that. So, um, yeah, I'd say at this point, it's only a matter of time, especially with a lot of the trolling that um, the North Korean regime has been doing in recent years. That we're not that far away from actual warfare um, returning with a vengeance on the Korean Peninsula. Of course, the Vietnam War was the f was the um, second was this first major war in which um, in which an entire generation of American soldiers died for died f um, for profit. That's the long and short of it, pretty much. And the fact that Americans so this, this, this that was that was one of the great evils in America, how American society treated the returning soldiers after the war after the war ended. Where they were pretty much demonized for their um, f and mostly they were demonized mostly because that was the first war that America lost. That's that was one of the two main reasons that American soldiers returning from Vietnam were demonized. The other reason, because it was a political war, and it was it was a proxy war between what was then the South Viet Cong and the North Viet Cong, being um, being backed by the United States and Russia. Of course, Russia's Vietnam came, would come during the '80s when they invaded Afghanistan, but that's a topic for another day. Actually, I think I talked about it in a blog for a couple years back, but whatever. Um, fast forward to, like I just mentioned um, a minute ago, the war on terrorism. See, um, all the pundits on the on major news say call it America's longest war. Technically, it wasn't a war, as the last war that there was the the last. It's it's interesting how s politicians and the media like to ignore what is actually. On, on the on the books, war can only be declared um, by a two thirds vote of Congress. That hasn't happened since World War II. The conflicts in Korea, Vietnam, and the Middle East were military actions, yes, but and they were fully funded, yes, but was actual war declared in all three cases? No, they weren't. So that's something to think about. If people want, if people, if this country wants. This country is, on the one hand, famous for, well known for being able to deploy its military assets anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. But um, it's pretty, it's pretty absorbing thought to think of that. Pretty much, this country can go to war with anyone for any or no reason, at the drop of a hat. That's basically what happened um, with the war on terrorism. Did we get most of the people responsible for the events of 9/11? Probably. But was it worth? Um, may, I know was it worth, and in terms of my words carefully, um, becoming hated by an entire region? Absolutely not. And the last five to six years in particular are um, we are seeing the fallout of carpet warfare, as the extreme right likes to call it. Like, let's just go and bomb this country off the map. Let's just go and send troops and just exterminate all these people just because we can. It really is sad that that is the narrative that so many people in this country, and I'm not saying it's necessarily you, and it certainly isn't me, but it is unfortunate that, unfortunate but not surprising, that a lot of people, that to a lot of people in this country, that is not only perfectly normal to think that way, but that's the way it should be. I mean, it goes with the old saying, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. And it's it's a very old saying, but it hasn't been any more relevant now than I can think of to say that. This, this country's um, history with um, history of war is just one facet of this country's obsession with violence. Another Another dimension is the media. I mean, like I said in my in my blog on 
tell on how correct television is to the human mind, to the to kids' minds. You have you have. And I'm speaking mostly to. Are you speaking most to American media? Of, um, on that note, just to put it to put it that way, you have Hollywood. You have movies. You have TV shows. I mean, even more so today, where you're seeing people being being killed off in the most graphic ways um, imaginable. Twenty, thirty, forty years ago, something like that. The camera would would move out the way, would it change angle? Um, so you wouldn't actually see it. But now it's not it's not only being shown, but they have it being slowed down. And on certain YouTube videos, they have replays of it being done with certain angles. I mean, violence on television and and in movies was considered taboo up until about twenty years ago. That's when, for some reason in this country, it became accepted. And, and and it became okay, which I talk about a bit more in the in the um, in the TV demand in the in, in my in that other video, but um, yeah. In addition to movies and um, movies and TV shows, you've also got video games, Call of Duty, um, a lot of other high-profile AAA game series, and I don't have no problem saying that as a gamer myself. Um, you have a lot of video games that promote violence and killing and all that stuff. And, and people wonder why so many kids these days are are very lack empathy and lack 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 empathy and lack a willingness to empathize with people that are different from them. It's because they it's because violence it's because violence is what they've seen on the screen. Or, the, or their environment around them, and that's what they know. And I'm going to speak more to the environment piece in a minute, but, um, yeah. An interesting phenomenon that has recently con continuing the um, medium narrative, an interesting phenomenon that has really exploded over the last 20 years, 20, 20, 21, 22 years in particular, has been the import of um, Japanese, anime video, uh, anim um, Japanese anime and manga from Japan. A lot of people like to tout that Japan lacks values to have all this stuff going on in their media. Like the, the reality is, the reality is a lot of that stuff really caters to a niche audience. And the interesting, the thing worth pointing out is Japan's values and America's values are totally different. Whereas in Japan, you can have those things and not have to worry about someone emulating someone being decapitated or someone being shot full of holes um, and wanting to copy do, do a copycat version of that on people that they know. You don't have to worry about that in Japan. In America, unfortunately, you do. Why? Because America has an obsession with death and violence. And yes, I know it might, it might feel a little bit weird and a little bit strange that I'm able to say all that with a straight face, but it is what it is. Now the environmental piece. Back and track a little bit um, through history. As everyone is should be aware by now, America is a melting pot. It's a country that was founded by immigrants, for immigrants. Though, interesting, over the last 40, 50 years now, we've been saying, we don't want you, you don't want you people to come to our borders. Go away. We don't care about the violence in your country. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Um, a lot of um, get, get, trying to stay on, trying to focus now a bit. Um, a lot of people bring a lot of their cultures from their place of origin with them. Um, like a big thing that's been that's a lot that's often debated is spanking. Um, culturally, that's okay in a lot of families, and and um, and culturally, it's okay in a lot of families, and culturally, it's not. There's conflicting research. There's research that there's definitive research that was recently done that says, in the long term, spanking does more harm than good, as it re as it as it um, indoctrinates and justifies violence uh, against others is okay. Um, without getting into the whole, without bringing this into a whole spanking conversation and all that, um, that is a role. 
Um, a lot of people might disagree. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm getting a bit off topic, so I'm just leaving it at that. So, um, yeah, it's um, that plays a role. And then, of course, you also have um, kids that may have been picked on and bullied in school um, growing up. I mean, I think I talked about this in, in one or two videos um, a couple years back. You see violence at school or in school, depending on what time period you grew up in. I mean, I grew up in, I'm a 90s, I went to school during the 90s. Late 80s, early, um, during, late, yeah, I started going to school, yeah, basically 90s, early 2000s, so, seen it all, done it all. I mean, I mean, a lot of folks that grew up during that, that went, there was in school during that time period, remember all the stay in school videos and all the anti-bullying, the end of the anti-bullying campaign that followed the events of, of the um, mass shooting at Columbine High. I mean, and that's another facet that I'm going to get into in a minute, but, um, yeah. Um, back, um, getting a little bit back to the, um, the media's role in promoting violence as okay, it all started with Columbine. That's, that's when it became okay to kids to carry out mass shootings and mass violence at, at their schools. I mean, the media did one in amazing job glorifying what those two gentlemen did. I mean, on that note, um, on the one, I mean, on that note, I'm not justifying what they did, but that situation, and I'm going I'm to just insert, preface this with this, my opinion, but that mass shooting, as well as the ones that happened before and after it, were 100% pre preventable. The problem is... People ignore this, the symptoms. That was the problem. Folks ignore the symptoms of what of what eventually happened. These these acts of mass violence don't just random don't just randomly happen. There are always warning signs. I mean, it's it's interesting how folks always say, "I didn't. They weren't that kind of a person. I can't believe they did that." Or they were just a nice, sweet. Little, no, they weren't. There were signs. You just chose to ignore them. You were in denial because of your relationship to the, to this, to this, that, and the other. And just own up to it. Just said I didn't. Just say you didn't care, because that was why they. That's why they did it in the first place. I can say that because we have a lot of folks that have come out of that have come clean and said that they've that they worked for ISIS and Al Qaeda. Or used to be mass murderers themselves, and are now on the street now. And they said, "You know what? I was at a low point in my life, and they were saying a lot of things that I agreed with. So I said, you know what? I'm I'm hip. Let's do it.' And then after a while, I decided, you know what? Um, I don't really feel that. Uh, you know what? This isn't really what I expected. I don't really like, agree with a lot of what's going on. I'm out. That's the long and short of it. And on since I mentioned ISIS, um. This is the one thing that I agree with both the government and the media on. They are a death cult. They are not indicative of anything that has to do with Islam or middle or people that live in the Middle East in general. And it's a travesty that the Western world has chosen to turn a blind eye to this. And we are going to pay for we are going to pay for not wanting to clean up the mess that we created very soon. Wow, I never expected this video to get to nearly 20 minutes, but what? interesting. Good news is I can upload this without editing it, doing any editing. So, pretty much, this brings us to the obvious question, because I want to make sure that there is a there is a silver lining to all this, since I've talked about a pretty heavy slash depressing topic. Can America turn this around? And in order to fully break the chains of its past, it's going to have to make a lot of very difficult decisions in the very near future. If it wants to break the cycle completely and no longer be known as a country that is obsessed with death, it has to do that in stages. Number one, it needs to stop bombarding people with that, with violence in the media. That's number one. Number two, it needs to actually do, it needs to actually triple, first restore education nationwide and then triple the funding and that needs to actually show that it cares about public education which it hasn't in decades I don't just mean certain I don't just mean the rural, rural towns and cities but I mean 
major population centers, because those are the places that a lot of most people focus on when it comes to public education. They are the face of public education. They look like garbage because a lot of the money that is supposed to go to them are either being devoted to the to our military, or they're being or they're being diverted to charter schools, and or even worse, they're being devoted to companies that could care less about our children. That's number one. Number two, start writing blank checks to wars that they, that this country can't afford to be paying for, especially when it should be investing in other things like infrastructure. There is no reason that the richest country in the world has the infrastructure from the 1950s and 60s, yet the post-communist Germany, Japan, and many other countries that were part of the Iron Curtain have done a much better job at getting themselves up to date. I mean, they're still pretty far behind compared to France and, 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 and um, Great Britain, but they've done a much better job than America. We literally, we have bridges, tunnels, and highways that are falling apart while we continue to write blank checks to, the, to our military industrial complex. I mean, President Obama had to write idea, uh, had the right idea in slashing this country's military and this is one thing that I will always disagree with Republicans in the extreme right on in terms of let's just we're gonna to roll back we're gonna roll back the cuts. We're gonna roll back the cuts the president the current administration did and, and triple no quadruple the military funding. We it's already been proven that the United States military can run on a quarter on a on a quarter on a fraction of the budget that it had before Obama came in office and still fully protect this country. We need to focus less on picking fights with people outside of our borders and focus more on helping the people that actually live in our borders. I mean, even the whole, and this is getting a bit off topic, the whole narrative, we're going to build a wall that spans the entire border with Mexico and make them pay for it. Mexico doesn't have beef with us. And this country doesn't have a beef with Mexico, technically. They just It's just political talk. I mean, anyway. <laughs> Something else. That's I think that's to mention two or three. I can't remember. But anyway, so we've got media, we've got the military fund, we got the re realign the funding, education. I'd make that number four. Education. It's sure that this country has a very violent history. Um, and but there are but this country does, and this is going to sound very consol conciliatory, but this country does have a history of also eventually doing the right thing. These right things, it actually needs to spend more time with, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to throw a bone and all that, but yeah. This country definitely needs to focus more on, edu uh, needs to focus on peace and not war. And that's, historically speaking, this country has had a very hard time with that. I mean, a lot of people say, America shouldn't have gotten involved with World, with World Wars One and Two, but that was a situation in which America would have been will have, will have eventually gotten involved with both of them, without getting into the historical narrative and all that. Those were unavoidable situations. I mean, Vietnam was 100 percent avoidable. I say Korea, not as much. Um, Desert Storm One, um, not as much. Desert Storm 2, absolutely. America did the right thing not getting involved in Libya. We, we, we took the right approach with the proxy war in that particular situation. Um, the so-called war on terrorism, um, certain parts of that I definitely do agree with. We should we had the right approach going out, taking um, breaking up the Taliban, because that had become a ha that had become that had become a haven for um, for Al Qaeda and um, a lot. A, 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 it had become a safe haven for a lot of terrorist groups to organize and throw with and so on. And I feel the same way about some about some about Somalia, and to a certain extent Pakistan. But I think I feel like if we're gonna, go, I think I feel like historically this country it seems a lot more ready to go to war with somebody than to make peace with than to try to peacefully resolve its differences with people. Just the other day, there was a new, I saw a news report about. About American tanks trolling the um, the Russians um, somewhere in the somewhere um, in in Eastern Europe. 
I mean, on the one hand, the Russians had it coming. They like to, um, they, they've been trolling American um, Navy, naval ships in the North Pacific, but still. It's pretty obvious, on that note, it's pretty obvious that there, there will probably be an, another war. There will probably will be the long-feared war between America and Russia, but I think we're a ways from seeing that actually happen. Or rather, I hope we are. <laughs> <sighs> I, didn't, I honestly didn't expect this video to go on for over 20 minutes, but... Um, and looking back on things, it's pretty sobering. It's pretty sobering, and I also think it's very important to say, and... I feel like at the same time, just because this country has a history of violence and war, doesn't mean that, that all Americans feel that way. I obviously don't. Um, and I'm pretty sure the majority of Americans feel the same way I do. But at the same time, I also agree that everyone deserves to feel safe. Everyone deserves to feel protected. Everyone deserves... And everyone deserves to feel loved. But that doesn't necessarily mean that violence needs to be part of the equation. I mean, a lot of other countries have figured out how to do, achieve all those things without violence. I mean, of course, this, I'm going to talk about this a bit, um, a bit more in another video, but we live in a country where a handful of people control most of the world's resources. A handful of people um, control most of America's resources. Con most of Congress is pretty much owned by companies and individuals who paid for them to be there. And on that note, two of them are running for president right now. One of them is Donald Trump, and one of and the other one is Hillary Clinton. I've already said in both my blogs and in two other videos that I'm voting for, for um, Bernie Sanders regardless, even if it's as a right -hand. So that's a bit of food for thought. Regardless of the politics, and I'm going to talk about this a bit more in another video, um, he's the only person whose loyalty can't be bought. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to be adding a bit off tra track there. This has become a pretty interesting half hour video, so um, um, yeah. This is, this is a country that has really focused this is a country that, on the one hand, a lot of the technical innovations have been driven by war, but also a lot of NASA doesn't get a lot of credit for a lot of the um, technological advances, like the microwave, and now we have self-driving cars and a lot of other things. Speaking of NASA, they announced a couple weeks ago that they were releasing a lot of new, a lot of patents that they've held for decades for private companies to make use of. So, um, yeah. And of course, there's also the Chilean mine um, accident that happened a couple years back. American Americans were able to help uh, rescue all of the miners in that mine collapse. So, um, yeah. Like I said a couple minutes ago, this country can um, resolve problems around the world without the use of violence. The problem is, it, the problem of, uh, I guess, the problem like I've, that's become a refrain now for me now, I think, is choosing to do that more than using the big stick. And on that note, um, I think it was Ro I think it was um, Teddy Roosevelt that said, "Speak softly, but carry a big stick." The problem is we've been using we've been using a bazooka to stick smart flies. We need to focus more on um, focusing on the problem itself and not just trying to generalize things. You know, I would love to hear your feedback. If you, I would love to hear your feedback and comments um, on this. If you want to do a video for reply. Feel free. Check the video description for this video for my contact information. Um, of course, if you're just watching this from my um, video blog, from my um, WordPress blog, you know what to do. And um, yeah, you guys enjoy the rest of your day.